A24. 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 I'm not sure which one it is. Is it really A24? Alpha 2 Quattro. Oh. A24-7 is all I like to call it. Because they're always a, making they're content. They're constantly. They're constantly. They have not stopped since, what, 2013 or It's whatever. been 10 years yeah. of A24. Perfect time to do a top 10, though. Someone say the best time. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that And intro. there's a new A24 movie, Past Lives, coming yeah, out. That's out, yeah. This year, 2023, and a couple others. A couple. I mean, at least like 10 others. That's the thing. There's like 100 of them. <laughs> Hello everyone. We got a top 10 here. I only asked each other to do top fives. Yeah. And then I was like, well, I felt bad leaving out some of these movies. So It was hard. It was really hard on it. I think we, oh, I don't, you were the first one with your list, but I think the two of us were thinking, okay, uh, let's strategically put other things on yeah. the list too. <laughs> oh, do, do we have similar lists? Well, I wanted to put Lady Bird on there, but I was like, well, Zach, Zach has Lady Bird, so I'm going to go with something else. Yeah. But I think... Everyone will agree. This is probably solid list. A solid list. top ten. Yeah. We got Lady Bird, which you know Greta Gerwig. She's got yeah. Barbie coming out. This was her start. I mean, she had written, co-written stuff oh, before. Oh yeah, she was in Francis Ha and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But yeah. But Lady Bird is basically it takes place 2003. I graduated in 2003. Characters graduating 2003. You, you listen to Crash all the time. <laughs> All the time. Oh, I grew up in uh, Sacramento. No, I didn't. No. You do seem like a Dave Matthews Band fan. I'm not. No, no, real real exactly. fans call him Dave. So. Yeah. DMB. Good movie. Yeah. Very but funny. It's a great movie. Yeah. And Timothy Chalamet, this is kind of, I mean, I know he'd been in other stuff, but this really was, I think, like the beginning of what we know Chalamet mm -hmm. to be, you know, kind of a, an indie hipster dar 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 darling dar kind of guy. Now he's yeah. turned into... He's going to be A-lister. Well, he yeah. is A-lister, but like yeah. he's going to be like box office He's a routine guy. He's the Doom. He, so. Yeah, he has the Doom. <laughs> but Sharsha. Yeah, Sharsha. She is great in this movie. Yes. And Laurie Metcalf is also Fan. amazing. He is great. Everyone in the movie is great. It's and a really good it, movie. And it's a really timeless coming of age yeah. story. It just, I have a lot, you obviously, I have a lot of connection to it because I was a senior in that year. So I'm like. You were also in plays. Yeah. Theater no, kid. I wasn't, no. You could I did, have been. I didn't want to do Shakespeare, so. You could have. You could have done <laughs> I it. I could have. I could have done it. You could have done it. You could have been a contender. It, it's. I could have been somebody. <laughs> number eight, number nine. It is. It's eighth grade. That's yeah. why I said number eight. But Bo Burnham, coming of age story. Incredibly awkward. Mm hmm. Incredibly emotional. Yeah. And intense. Mm -hmm. The one scene in the car. Like, oh my God. That is. Like, it, I, he can do anything based yeah. off of this one movie. And he did. He did it inside. And is... how I assume me and JD are going to have the talk oh, with our say. daughters. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be very awkward. Be very yeah. awkward. It, it is. And I, I saw this with my wife, who is a teacher of seventh and eighth graders. And it was like a whole other level for her to. It, could, yeah. it was maybe one of the most awkward movie going experiences uh, of my life, but you know, really imagine. good. It was a really great movie. I, I, it make, I'm just, I want him to do something else. Yeah. You know, it makes me like, ah, give me, Bo, what are you doing? Number eight, we have After Yang. I don't think these boys have seen it. I've not. No, it's it's a real blip on the, it's a real. Oh. Jody Turner Smith, Colin Farrell, uh, Haley Lou Richardson. It is amazing. I believe Colin Farrell should have won an Oscar for this performance, but he didn't. So, it's that's, great. That's the issue with A24 is they, they're, they're awards. <laughs> You're saying <laughs> it's that way. Did I say A24 again? Yeah. A24. <laughs> what it is, yeah. is it's that they put out like five really great like contenders yes. that could really be. And they focus and on they, one. And they pick one mm -hmm. and that's what happens. And that's every, that's every studio. Yeah. But like, it stinks. You have like really great movies that come out in what, they came in like May? Yeah, yeah. And then so did, so did everything I ever at once. But I think once one of them enters the chat and it's like, all right, that's the one. You <laughs> yeah. know? Like, I don't know if they were, I, I would maybe put money on the fact that they thought that after Gang was probably going to be more of the Oscar contender than everything ever yeah. at once. What well, in it then? Mean, so. Number seven, we have another one that would, everyone probably thought was going to be the big A24 movie is Ex Machina. Oh. Which is just a wild, a wild ride. I think this is the one that kind of puts them really, really in the mainstream. Yeah. Because this was the first movie I remember, A24 movie, I remember everyone talking about. 
Oscar Isaac, Donald Gleason, Alicia Vikander. I mean, this mm-hmm. is our first time to really see her and like her acting chops, and it's just really good. Yeah. It's it's my favorite of Garland. I know some people love like. Annihilation, and I haven't even seen Men. Uh, yeah, don't no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but it's just it's just really it's just I love like the this the the tightness of it. It's just very claustrophobic. Mm-hmm. It's it feels right now very relevant. Oh yeah, <laughs> like it's kind of freaking me out. And you get Oscar Isaac dancing with like just with his chest out. It's and what's crazy movie. in the movie is the shorter version because they released a longer version yeah. online. I didn't know this was an A twenty four movie until we made this list. It's yeah. Like, oh. I, I thought it was a studio just movie or big studio. Really good. And I think this shows, this was the first, not first, but this was a big one that shows this is what we can do with a limited budget because mm. the effects look incredible. Yeah. And it's just, it's a really well made movie. I think it, it kind of puts so many people on a map. And I think it helps auteurs be like, hey, you can come here and make your movie. Yes. We'll fund a couple of them. Yeah. And then if you go on and do bigger and better, yeah. that's fine by us. Yeah. I mean, so. I think all of Garland's movies are A24. A24, right yeah. Now, so. mm-hmm. Number six, we have Uncut Jam. Uh, Uncut Jam. Man, I love this movie. I saw this with my uh, uh, father in law, and it was horribly awkward. <laughs> but uh, uh, we we both left the movie like, oh, man, Adam Sandler, like, whenever he's in the right role. Mm, another one that he should have been, like, there should have been an Oscar. I, I think everything. that's the year that. Was that uh, is that Parasite year? It was Parasite, it's Parasite year. So it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, they were banking on this one being like yeah. the one, and it, it. I mean, it was really great. I, I we'll get into Parasite in a ton, but like, yeah, you're right. This was the one they were like, yeah. we're putting all the gems in this one. Uh, it's just really good. Yeah, it is really good. It's fast paced. It, it, it it's. Uh, I think the Safdie brothers called it anxiety cinema. Yes. And uh, you feel that. If you really like Uncut Gems, you should go watch Good Time yeah. with Robert Pattinson. And then go watch The Batman. And then watch Batman. Yeah. Yeah, what are you showing me here? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> no, really good. Uh, I mean, everyone talks. <laughs> if anything, the biggest impact is Uncut Gems. You know? Yeah. Uncut Gems. She is their muse, after all. <laughs> Speaking of what are you showing me, number five, we got Hereditary. <sighs> which is, um, it's not elevator horror. We've already heard the argu- argument yeah. from uh, Ari Aster. Yeah. It's not elevated horror. It's just a different way to do horror. Yeah. I th- and it's a really, really awesome slow burn mm-hmm. movie about grief. And slow burn, not just like, I know when people are like, oh, it's a slow burn. And they kind of get freaked out. But no, it's like so creepy the whole time. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just ratchets up that tension so well. And Tony Collette is on fire, and uh, and Glitter Burn is literally, literally on fire. fire. <laughs> uh, and then it's just, it, it, there's just so many. I, I just love this movie so much. I it scared me like legit. Like when people talk about the movies that scared them in the theaters, this is one that like yeah. I'll never forget. I, I'll never forget going home and like looking into all. I was no one was home, and I'm like freaked out. Yeah, and I'm looking at all the corners. In the, in the ceiling to be like, it's Tony Clett up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really great. I, it's a huge just debut. All right, number four, we have Green Room, which I just watched the other day. I have not seen Have it. you never seen, never Green, seen Green, Green Room? Room. All right, so <sighs> this is probably the least known of all these. And for people who have not, not heard what Green Room is about, it's basically a punk band. They're just doing gigs for money so they yeah. can keep traveling. They end up unknowingly going to a neo-Nazi like enclave. Things just go go downhill yeah. from there. Uh, they oh, I should have worn my I should have <laughs> worn my green room shirt. Should have. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is so good. It is like simultaneously like horror and just a like a action thriller. Mm-hmm. It's so and it's very punk rock. Patrick Stewart is the lead Nazi. Yeah, amazing. It's so <laughs> good. Anton Yelchin. Rest in peace. Uh, incredible. Imogen Poots, uh, Elia Shawkat. Like, everyone is just killing it in this movie. And it's just so, it's so freaking good. You'll love it. I, I, I've, the one thing I hear from everyone is it's gnarly. Who made it? Jeremy Sonier, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So this is the second it's one. It's basically like um, if Imogen Poots was playing Charles Bronson. Yeah. And Anton was playing an old Western, a dude from an old Western that doesn't want to pick up a gun anymore. And that's basically like it's with punk rock. With punk rock and that sounds awesome. So, <laughs> and it has like the best ending, like the ultimate yeah. like best ending line 
of like any movie. I, I love this movie so much. It is it's like top ten for me. Of all time. Wow. Yeah. Of all Dang. time. Was it on your top ten? Fuse go I don't think so, but I, I would definitely after watching it a couple more times, I would definitely put it on there. Number three, we have another green movie. We have Green Knight, which is the retelling of you know, the sword. And King stuff. Arthur? <laughs> yeah, King Arthur. I forgot his name. <laughs> Anyways, Dev Patel basically going on this epic journey, but not in the way you think. It's not grandiose in any way, yeah. even though there are giants. Alicia Vikander is in yeah. it as well. David Lowry directed it. It's amazing. Uh, I think it's the most ethereal fantasy movie I've yeah. ever seen. It's And it looks incredible. Yes. It's so weird mm -hmm. and wild. Yeah, it's still better than Ghost Story, uh, <laughs> which isn't even super weird. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's a really, I, I mean, fun's not the right word, but it's a fun watch. It's just, yeah. you're, you're like really invested, like things that you know and you love and that you grew up know, like learning about, like it's kind of playing out in this different way and, and David Tell rules. What's great about David Lowry is he does one for me, one yeah. for you. But his one for you's are also his. for, for yeah. him as well. This is obviously not a one for you, but... When he does his one for me, it's insane what he does. Like yeah. Ghost Story, Ain't Them Body Saints, this, they're all just like uniquely his own movie. Yeah. It's something that you know, fantasy movie, Green Knight, but every every one that he's done, it's a, it's a genre that has been done before, but he's doing it his own way. It's clear why A24 makes it, not yeah. anybody else, so. Yeah. And then he's like, I wanna do Pete's Drag? Yeah. And then after this, I'm gonna do a Peter Pan movie. <laughs> These dragons good. And they're good. Yeah. They're good movies. Number two, we have Everything Everywhere All at Once. It is obviously, we've talked about this ad nauseum uh, yes. at this point. As, as everyone else has as well. <laughs> and it's referenced in Across the Spider Verse 2, so without, spo without cool. spoiling it. Uh, it's actually pretty heavily referenced. Yeah. Uh, and it's just crazy how much this. Everything Everywhere All at Once is gonna change cinema. Yeah. Just like Jurassic Park did back in the day, just like The Matrix did. This is a, a point in time where cinema is gonna be different afterwards. It's canon. It's canon, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's he, a canon event. It is canon. Yeah. <laughs> and even like, I think it was Guillermo del Toro and Alfonso Cuaron were both like, not for me, but I can see this changing cinema from now on. Yep. Like that's. And it could be for a bad reason. Could be for a good reason, but... God, could you imagine whatever bad thing they're gonna get for, like, what the... Because there will be, like, bad parts. Yeah. Could you just imagine, though, what those are gonna be? The Flash, probably. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> cool. We're gonna have to take that that clip right here that we just did and air it in a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and number one, we have Moonlight, which won the Oscar. I mean, everything, everywhere, all at once did as well, but Moonlight is just, like, it was proof positive that A24 could still make indie movies with a wide yeah. audience. Because I think, too, around this time, is we're, people were getting a little, like, oh, A24, there's just, it's, like, dumb, it's hipster, everyone, no one, like, we get it, like, your art too yeah, far too. Mostly horror, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, oh, you're doing horror, and you're just, but, but, like, this really does, like, yeah. kind of change the conversation. Barry Jenkins came in yeah. hot and was just like, I'm going to make this story that, is, you know, it touches a lot of groups and it affects a lot of people and it's about like you know an absent mother it's about finding different father figures it's about accepting who you are but the acting Trevante Rhodes yeah. especially Mahersha Ali obviously Janelle yeah it's just like everyone yeah. is perfect in it and it's just like I mean I could talk about it for hours it's in my top 10 it's probably in my top two yeah if I if I have to say it's really so, good. It's on your letterbox. So it's on that. my letterbox. Yeah, right right below Requiem for a Dream. Yep. And you know, and this is a movie. I think this, if I had to pick of all the A twenty four movies, this is the A twenty four movie I remember being in like a packed theater for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. Like, yeah, oh. that like the the. I mean, it, granted, it was a smaller theater. Yeah, but it was just like I mean, everyone was there. Everyone was keyed to see this movie. It really does like I think prove to everyone. Hey, A twenty four. They're sticking around. They're a real thing. Yeah. So get used to it. Get used to it because they ain't going to stop. And I can't wait to do our 20-year video and see how many of these are still on our list. Moonlight will always oh, be on there. Hopefully it's, uh, I did notice, like, so A24, like, was, like, 
couple a year and then 2020 hit and it's like 15 a year yeah. so yeah. like uh, now they have seven oscars for one movie they're gonna be churning them it out. really is i mean it's they will forever be the studio that changed like budgeting and like, yeah. you can make really great movies on a smaller budget and it, it them and jason blum will be the two that kind of like yeah like, people talk yeah. about and i think in some ways sony is the first big major picture company to like recognize that because yeah. Across the Spider-Verse was only made for $100 million. Yeah. Looks like a $300 million yeah, movie. Yeah, that blows my yeah. mind. So, and it, it, yeah, you're just like, when people are like, where'd the mid-budget movie go? Like, they're right here. Yeah. And they're back. They're back. And, and they'll, they're hopefully not going away. Un esercito di pro 